welcome Sasha Mainwright. Hi, everyone. As a uh, Brazilian citizen, I'm really excited for Jurgen's work and can't wait to learn more about it in coming days. Uh, it's an honor to be here today, uh, today uh, to tell you about a truly disruptive technology that will change the lives of millions. Uh, it's probably also a technology you've never heard of. But first, let me descend into the seedy and nefarious underbelly of Washington, D.C., where I run this Open Technology Institute. And OTI is a place where, yes, we have wonks who work on all of those interesting things with Congress critters and senior White House officials conduct research analysis on today's most pressing tech policy issues. But unlike almost any other think tank, OTI also has a field operations arm that works on the ground with communities all around the globe. And we are also a tech incubator, a venture capital fund for open source technology that builds these technologies from the ground up, including an initiative that I'm going to talk with you about today, which is the Commotion Wireless Project. So we are a strange bird, this trifecta of tech and field work and policy acumen. Uh, but we have a bold goal, bring free, safe, ubiquitous communications to everyone on the planet. And if you're wondering, how are they going to do that? Uh, let me tell you. Traditional telecom infrastructure uses a hub and spoke architecture. And this is where devices connect up through a central point. And as our phone bills all attest, uh, it is built to maximize the billable moments on these systems. But it is horrendously expensive to build. It's remarkably inefficient for local communications. And as we've seen recently, it's dangerously problematic when it comes to facilitating centralized surveillance and censorship. What we've pioneered are technologies that enable peer-to-peer -peer communications, where the devices in your pockets, in your, in your briefcases, are the actual infrastructure. And as these small networks overlap, they create ever larger networks organically. Today, anyone can actually build 21st century telecommunications infrastructure using commotion and off-the-shelf hardware, cell phones, laptops, Wi-Fi routers, etc. And like the internet itself, what we've been building started with a very simple idea. How do we connect a few homes together? And in the year 2000, we had no idea whether what we were working on was even possible. We were just a bunch of curious geeks. With, we're experimenting with this entirely new type of technology. So within half a decade, we had built networks that spanned dozens of square blocks and created this unprecedented, what became known as mesh wireless technology. And we weren't alone in these endeavors. In 2004, I hosted the first International Summit for Community Wireless Networks, which brought together hundreds of leaders from the foremost networks around the globe. And this yearly convening has rapidly become the preeminent gathering for a movement encompassing hundreds of these networks everywhere. In 2010, the United States State Department made a multi-million dollar investment in commotion with the goal of supporting communications amongst human rights workers, democracy advocates, people working under the most repressive regimes on the planet. And they asked us to build what the New York Times dubbed the internet in a suitcase. Well, let me let you in on a little secret. There is no suitcase. In fact, commotion is a cross-platform, multi-operating system piece of software. It's bits, it's not atoms. And Commotion is also this digital literacy platform that empowers non-geeks to build their own telecommunications infrastructure. We've built a number of test beds in Detroit, in Washington, D.C., in New York City, in many of the poorest communities in those locations, in, U in Asia, and in Africa, and in elsewhere. And we've recently begun seeing additional networks popping up everywhere from St. Louis to Somaliland as people build their own. And for me, what's really exciting is not just the internet connectivity and Commotion's ability to share that, but also the ability to create local communications where no outside connectivity exists in the first place. This is the Tahrir Square use case. And in 2013, we built out these pop-up networks in a variety of locations at NCMR in Denver, at the Allied Media Conference in Detroit, where we interconnected a number of buildings throughout a small campus, 
and at last month's wireless summit in Berlin. And as these screenshots show, Commotion has both a local application side of its work as well as sharing connectivity. And these local services include everything from information sharing to social networking applications to shared note taking and documentation, maps, pictures, streaming video, telephony, etc. And at last month and at last month's wireless summit, participants used and loved this technology and brought it back to their own countries for experimentation and implementation. Now, when we scan the check-in of milestones on this project over time, what you see is a rapidly accelerating research and development over the past three years. And if we look at Commotion, you see that it's grown from a single team, each of those things fluttering around as a project team, uh, to a truly expansive programming effort. This visualization of the code repository documents the rapid extension of functionality and the explosive uptake within the open source community. What we're building are these technologies that will bring affordable communications to billions of underserved, safe communications to the surveilled, and local communications to everyone who ever wanted to decrease their billable moments. So fundamentally, commotion is about connecting people directly to one another using the devices they already have within a neighborhood, across a city, throughout a region, and around the globe. And after 13 years in development, we're releasing version 1.0 at the end of the year to provide this truly revolutionary tool for people to build a liberatory 21st century telecommunications infrastructure. So here's where you can find out more information, and thank you very much. Uh, I'm curious, what you're doing is extremely ambitious, it's very exciting. Uh, it will also uh, undercut a lot of very large existing businesses, particularly if you scale to the levels that you are hoping to. Mm -hmm. So what kind of pushback have you gotten from telecommunications industry and how do you circumvent it? Sure, so it, it's synergistic with a, today's businesses, right? So if you look at the metro scale and larger networks that have been built, in Athens, Greece, in Vienna, Austria, in Berlin, in and around Barcelona, Spain, you see that the existing telcos are still doing their, their thing. This just provides another option for local communities. And some of these networks are quite large. Right? Athens, Greece has 2,500 nodes. GuifiNet has, I think it's about 20,000 nodes and is spanning now about 9,500 square kilometers. So what we're looking at is really a system that is really focused on low-cost connectivity, local connectivity, rather than trying to blanket an entire nation. And much like we, what we've seen is people adapting over time to the internet, to radio, to satellite, et cetera, the, the business models will evolve to take advantage of what this thing brings to communities, but then also to shift, hopefully, the price point dramatically downward. Because that's the only way you get the other five billion people online that can't afford today's business models. Thank you so much, Sasha. My pleasure. Thank you.